Okay, so this video is about the VXP88. As you can see here, I've got one hooked up. There we go. And what I've got it hooked up to, first of all, is a test track here. So I have four isolated pieces of track going along in here. And you can see, uh, starting from the end, there is a break, there is a break, and there is a break. That's where it's double gapped. And you can see I have in those sections, what make up those sections is a cable piece of track that brings power in, and then a cable piece of just straight track. So four sections running along so I can go back and forth. What I've got connected to that is basically four, in, isol uh, four wires from one side of the rail going to the header on this side. And again, this guy is in, handles eight segments. So four, four of them hook here and four of them hook here on this side, which I do not have hooked up. And then the rest of the connections are, well, the rest of the connection is I have the other side of the track. All four of them come in here. They tie together and eventually come back through one black wire that's probably hard to see on this table. And it is connected to the end connector right there. So when we look at that, that's the end connector, goes down, goes to the side of the segments that's connected all the way. It's, and per this part, one of the items it can't do, or its uh, limitation is it can only be eight segments within this side here that is the common side. Again, you've got the four there and four there. And then coming into that, you've got a ground coming in, and then your two powers coming from the booster. So over here, I've got my ground coming in, and then I got my two wires coming in from the booster. Ground, two wires hooking it up. So those go back to the command station. Again, that goes to common. Four connections there go to my isolated track. And then I will go in and I testing the thing, uh, testing the device. So I'll just go in, move them over here, and then run it. And then of course I got the LT5, I believe is the name to it, aboard on here. So what is it doing? So this right now is showing me that my the bottom LED is on red. And this is the book, instruction booklet. Looking in the instruction booklet, you've got. Um, a chart here that explains to you what all the different P uh, light LEDs mean. So, bottom LED means that this whole section of four is up and running good. You can see that I have a locomotive sitting on the farthest over to the left trace, and I'm going to go in here, put the train in reverse, and I'm going to start backing it up. Let's see if I can get it so you can see good. Yeah, there we go. So it's going back and it's blinking. So it's blinking fast. So there you can see it's just crossed the gap and there's a transponder on and that is why it is blinking. The red is blinking, continuously blinking, going across the gap, continuous blinking. And now the train is at the far end with the tr transponder uh, connected to it. Now I'm gonna go in and do something. I'm gonna go in here on my throttle. I'm going to select locomotive. Yep. I'm going to turn the locomotive down and select locomotive. And I'm going to hit exit. And what that's done is that has released it from a slot. Notice the LED on there is no longer flashing. So that LED flashing your uh, front headlight is part of somehow connected to the transponder information. Works with it. I'll turn it on again here at the end to show you one more time. But if we now go to the little PC board on here, our LT5, we're going to see that the end item is lit solid because if it's solid, that means it's occupied and no transponder. So I'm going to take this train and I'm going to slide it since I can't work on my phone. Now I uh, can't you get to control it with my throttle because I just unselected it. And now as we're going to see that it's across the gap and there's two LEDs on. I'm going to slide it over again. One LED on, you get the idea. Slide, 
two LEDs on, slide, one LED on, it's in the section, last section coming up, cross the gap again, and both LEDs on, and then move it all the way to the end, and both LED, or the one LED is on. I'm gonna go back to my throttle here. I'm gonna make sure I have the right side. I'm gonna hit loco and loc. So that reselected it. I'm gonna back this guy up. Now notice, if you will, the LEDs are flashing. That is part of the thing telling me transponder is working. So there's transponder working. The decoder tells me it's working. The BXP. The XP88 is showing me on the little board that it is working. I change my direction. Transponder, because it's flashing, not solid. I go driving across. There, so you can see it. When it crosses the gap, then gets to the other end. Other end. Transponder works. Sit on the gap. You can see lights flashing. If I was to unselect the locomotive, locomotive exit, I released it from the slot in the command station, then it goes to single, just solid, blink, uh, solid LEDs. And if I reacquire the locomotive, it goes back to flashing. I'm going to drive the locomotive forward for a minute, get it off. So the locomotive is sitting on the end track down there. But if I can hold enough, enough hands here, and I'm going to go in on the second to last slot here, and I am going to cause a short. Now it's blinking fast, which tells you that there's a short in that section. Pick it up, short goes away. Okay, so now what I'm going to try to do is hook it up to JMRI and not use the LEDs to tell me what's going on, but actually see if I can show some occupied and also see what engine number is there. And I'm going to try, and then I was going to try to look to learn how to do firmware updates, and then I was going to try to do learn the same things for the PM. 74 and the BXPA1 model reverse.